Hello, Nick here from Technorovo and welcome back to the channel. A while back, I did a video showcasing the Sage Bambino Plus coffee machine and Smart Grinder Pro. It's a solid combo for the money and I'll leave a link on the screen somewhere now for that if you want to check it out. The emphasis on that video was more of the coffee machine and less of the grinder. So I thought the grinder deserved some love in its own right. So today I'm gonna to run you through everything you need to know about the Smart Grinder Pro. We'll grind at various settings, pull some slots and hopefully some of you might find it helpful. I've been using this every day for well over a year now and it hasn't skipped a beat. Before we get into it, this year we're trying to really grow the channel. So if you like this video, we'd love a sub and a thumbs up if you think we're worthy. Okay, let's get grinding. So this is the Smart Grinder Pro from Sage or if you're from outside the UK, it might be from Breville. I know they may be the same company or sister companies, but it's the same machine regardless. Retail price is just over 200 pounds here in the UK, although you can pick these up a little bit cheaper during a sale event. It comes in three colors, brushed steel, which I have here, a matte black or a darker gray steel. It's got stainless steel conical burrs that's the grinding tool on the inside of the machine and will pretty much grind your coffee beans to the consistency you want for you to make your coffee the way you want to 60 settings in total for grind course plus weight and shot count and you can grind straight into your port filter or into a container it comes with two port filter cradles 50 to 54 mil and 58 mil plus a plastic container. The hopper can hold up to 450 grams of beans if you like to keep them in there that is. It comes with a two year warranty and uses 165 watts of power. Moving from the top down, hopper at the top with a rubber lid that provides somewhat of an airtight seal. Below that and inside the hopper, the burrs. Then moving down, you've got the LCD display showing grind course, grind time and shot count. You've then got a small dial to the front to select grind amount, then a larger dial to the right hand side to select grind size, a shot button and start stop. Below that, the outlet where the ground coffee comes out, then the hanger for your port filter, which also has a push button behind it. So instead of pressing a button to grind with your finger, you can push the port filter in instead and it will start grinding. You can then also hold the port filter against that button to manually grind as well if you need a little bit more. If you're not using a port filter, you press the start pause button. Below that, a removable tray. So any lost bits of coffee collects here. You can then lift it off and clean in the sink. The machine sits on rubber feet and there is a cable tidy underneath the machine so you can wind around the power cable if you needed to. So in terms of settings, the first is grind time or you could say weight or quantity of coffee. This is how much coffee you will end up with in your port filter or container. And that amount depends on how big your port filter is and or for me dialing in an espresso shot the way I like it. Rotate the knob and the number will go up and down in increments of 0.2 seconds. And it's a matter of trial and error to get the amount of coffee you need. Next is the shot button, which is simply one or two, whether you're pulling a single or double shot. For me, I like it strong, so I always go for a double shot. The last is grind size, which starts at very fine or one, and then goes through coarseness for espresso, percolator, filter, and plunger or French press. Again, trial and error for the settings in general, and I do tend to fiddle depending on beans and what I need. The manual says one to 30 is the course required for espresso, although over kind of 12 seems a bit too high. Percolator is 31 to 45, filter is 46 to 54, and plunger is 55 to 60. Now, if you wanted to, there is some adjustment in the burrs themselves, so you can take the hopper off and manually adjust the course to suit. I have not done this, I haven't needed to, and it seems like quite a niche requirement. To get to the burrs, take the hopper off, twist the burrs to unlock and then lift them out. You will also need to do this when cleaning too. So generally I use the grinder with the coffee machine. So I'm making espressos, adding milk and getting my coffee. So my settings are around five to 12 on course, two shot and 11 seconds on grind time. If I find I'm pulling a bad shot from the coffee machine or I'm changing beans or they're just not as fresh as I hoped, I'll tweak those figures to suit. Okay, let's head over to kitchen and we'll grind some coffee and we can see what it looks like.
Negatives, it's a bit messy sometimes. Coffee does spill over or even onto the worktop, which isn't ideal. Static, yes, there can be some depending on the beans you're using. Noise is fine, it's a grinder and it's going to be noisy and I didn't find it a problem. You've got to expect that. The hopper, I used to fill it full with beans, but I don't anymore because it doesn't keep them fresh as well as an airtight container and fresh beans are important. So now I pour in just enough to make the coffee I need, keep the rest in the cupboard in an airtight container. I've only tried a few grinders in my time, so I'm no James Hoffman by any means, but I have found this to be really user friendly, easy to use, and makes really nice coffees through the machine next to it. At 200 pound, I'd say that's almost mid range, given a niche grinder is just over 500 pounds. Sage does do a cheaper grinder for about 120 pounds, but no display and unsure how accurate that will be. But it's an option if your budget can't stretch to the smart model. I've been using this setup now for about 12 to 18 months and the grinder hasn't skipped a beat. It's been reliable every day, producing at least four grinds, sometimes more, and it requires very little maintenance other than the occasional clean. For me, as an average coffee consumer, it's been a dream and I'd happily recommend it. That's a wrap on this video. If you have stuck around until the end, then thank you very much. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below and I'll try and get back to you.